Okay, so we are live on YouTube. Welcome back, folks, at 6 o'clock. And uh, Simon's going to be talking to us about Venus. Well, I gave a talk earlier this afternoon about uh, the, 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 the planets subtitled, well, what exactly are we looking at? And I skipped over Venus intentionally because Venus, of course, at uh, this time of the year, uh, that's that bright light over in the southwest that we would have seen the, even starting uh, in an hour or so's time. So I thought it was appropriate to actually perhaps dedicate a session specifically to Venus. And for more than just this particular reason, this calendar reason, Venus is a, 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 of the uh, the, the very of, of the the rocky planets in our solar system. Venus occupies a, a what I think is a very special place. Um, it's often characterized as Earth's twin, sometimes mysterious twin. Mysterious because it's completely shrouded by carbon dioxide clouds, very, very thick carbon dioxide clouds. We're talking about over 90%, I think it's 98% of the atmosphere is carbon dioxide. And if you could stand on the surface, it, was like, it would like being about a kilometer down in, an, in, in, in ocean water on Earth. The pressure is so high. But the other reason is that Venus actually and we look at it, and that's what we're going to do in the next 25 minutes, actually looks not only nothing like Earth at all, but it actually looks nothing like any other planet that we've seen. Now, admittedly, we've already seen the planets of our solar system. But the important thing is, is that it looks nothing like the general models of planetary evolution. And we're struggling, really struggling, not only as amateurs, but the professionals are struggling to really understand why Venus looks the way it does actually down on the ground. So let's start with a, 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 a few key questions. Number one, why is Venus so bright? We've addressed this one actually several times already this afternoon, but I want to address it again because it's very important. Venus is so bright that it even challenges Jupiter, the magnificent gas giant, when it's really at its best. And why is it so bright? It's so bright because of those clouds of CO2. They simply reflect as much sunlight as possible back to us. If we were looking at a rocky surface, that rocky surface would have at least some places which were dark. If we were looking at the Earth, you'd have the oceans which are, are, are darker than uh, CO2 clouds and certainly darker than, say, granite on a continent. And those dark colors absorb light whereas CO2 reflects an enormous amount of the light back to us. But there's something more to what looking at Venus. When looking at Venus, if you get a chance to look at Venus through binoculars, it still looks essentially like a point of light. But if you get a chance to look at Venus through even a small, in fact, especially a small telescope, you can see that it actually is commonly, not every time, but commonly, a crescent in shape. And again, this was uh, already previously addressed um, uh, this afternoon, but it's worth actually having a good look at this because Venus is crescent in a crescent phase right now. And it's pretty obvious why. If you look at this, uh, this, this figure here, which is taken from Wiki Commons, the sun's in the middle there, and then Venus is shown in various positions around its orbit. The Earth is shown as well. And that's our, our, our point of view. So if we were looking directly at Venus in front of the sun, of course, we'd see its dark side and we wouldn't see anything. Wouldn't really matter whether it was actually directly opposite the sun or above it or below it. And if, the, if Venus is on the other side, well, uh, that's when we'd see a full Venus. And again, it could be to the side or just above or just below the sun and it would be visible. But the interesting thing is, is when it's off to one side, um, you can see that uh, it, uh, um, Venus, when it's hard right, is illuminated in, on one hemisphere, and when it's hard left, in our diagram here, it's illuminated on the opposite end hemisphere. And as it migrates from these quarter illumination uh, uh, perspectives towards a new moon dark perspective, you can see how the crescent, form, the cre the crescent phase forms. But this diagram also explains why we see 
Venus in the morning and why we see Venus in the evening. Right now, Venus is the, the evening star. And it's the evening star because it's actually sitting um, to the left of the sun in the coordinates of this diagram. And so it's in a trailing position. So as the sun sets, Venus is going down after the sun and the illuminated side faces the horizon, faces the sun as it goes down below the horizon. Whereas when, when Venus comes halfway around its orbit and comes into the opposite side, just, right, just by the words leading, then it will actually rise before the sun. And hence it will be the morning star and that crescent shape or the half illuminated shape um, that will depend on exactly where Venus is with respect to the sun. But you can see how the crescent is on one side here, whereas when the, 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 the planet is the evening star on the trailing side, the crescent is in the other, in, is in the other um, symmetry. So, okay, so much for what we can see when we look up. But what can we actually see if we go to the web and find out what the Magellan probe, which was sent in, uh, the, uh, who actually got to Venus by 1990 and mapped the surface of Venus through the carbon dioxide clouds for four years between 1990 and 1994. What did the Magellan probe see using its radar? And as I say, I have to repeat, Venus's surface is unlike any other terrestrial planet. Yep. Venus is about the same size as the Earth, but when we look at it, what we see is this. And what we're looking at basically are various shades of gray. You have to understand that when you're looking with radar, you're not looking at uh, things the same way as you would with white light. With white light, you can see things like colors, and colors might tell you something about the chemical composition of something. For example, granite is a much lighter color than basalt, which is much darker, and they're very different compositions. But this kind of image here tells you nothing of the kind. What it's telling you is how much of the radar signal is being reflected back towards the Magellan probe orbiting the planet and how much of that radar signal is being scattered. Scattered or reflected, reflected means you're going to get a very white color, of course called radar light. Whereas the dark areas those are radar dark. The black areas there, the, polyg the black triangles and polygons, that's absence of data. But medium gray, dark gray, that means that things are actually quite smooth, which is why the radar signal is not being scattered back to us. So what we're looking at here are a series of areas. Uh, let me go and see if I can get there. We go. There's my, my annotator. This area here, for example, very bright, very bright indeed. Uh, especially up here. And these two areas are well known. Uh, um, this is Aphrodite Terra. It's a highland area. It's about the size of Africa. This is the, uh, the Maxwell Montes. It's the highest mountain range uh, on Venus. Looks nothing like mountain ranges on Earth. Mountain ranges on Earth are long skinny things like the Alps or the Cordillera or the Andes or the Himalayas. And this is almost like a point, it's like a big bump. And understanding exactly how that formed is uh, the subject of much debate, and we're not going to get into all that. I just want to show you some pictures of what Venus looks like, and why it doesn't look like Earth. Why is it so bright? What's all this bright stuff? Is it snow on high ground? No, it's not. There's no snow there. That is actually fool's gold, or at least that's one of the hypotheses. It's got to be some kind of uh, deposit, mineral deposit, sitting on the high ground, which reflects radar back better than any other rock type. So uh, one idea is that that's actually fool's gold or iron pyrite or iron sulfide. It was different names for saying the same thing. There are no continents here, and there are no ocean basins here. There's no plate tectonics here, and there's a reason why there's no plate tectonics on Venus. Venus is dry. I don't mean that there's no water on the surface. I mean the planet inside is dry. And it be, but being dry, it doesn't really matter how warm or hot rocks are until they've melted. But solid rock, as long as it's dry, it can be hot, it's going to be incredibly stiff. I'm not going to get into the details, but it takes water inside the mineral structure of rocks 
to make them pliable enough that they will actually uh, uh, change shape, a uh, 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 flow, uh, given the geological time, that is. I don't mean uh, over a period of a day or so, but over a period of a, a million or so years, a hot, wet rock will actually flow. And that's what allows plates to move around, continents to move around, um, uh, an ocean floor to subduct into the interior of the Earth. Venus is bone dry, even inside. It may have had water one day. It may have had water in its very early history. The evidence for that really sits up in the atmosphere. There are water molecules in the, uh, uh, the atmosphere of, of Venus, not much. And the key thing is, is that instead of um, it being uh, H2O, it's actually D2O. D being deuterium, which is heavy hydrogen, if you like. It's an isotope of hydrogen. And those who work on Venus have been uh, measuring the deuterium to hydrogen ratio. And they determined that the only way of explaining the results they get is that Venus once had to have an ocean and that that ocean must have completely evaporated and that the, the evaporated water vapor uh, which went into the atmosphere must have been completely removed probably by the solar wind because Venus has no uh, uh, magnetic field to protect it. The other really intriguing thing about this image here is that Venus doesn't show much in the way of craters. Now, uh, Jim mentioned when he was talking about the moon uh, earlier this afternoon, that you can actually use the density of craters to determine whether stuff on a given body like the moon is older or younger than stuff on that same body. And the, 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 the craters which we see on, uh, on Mars, on the moon, and on Mercury, um, we know that, that, that they represent very ancient bombardment. We used to think that that bombardment was actually about 4 billion years old, but people working on the solar system are now beginning to realize that that bombardment probably is much older, probably formed just after, or occurred just after the formation of the solar system. And it's all the stuff that was actually congregating together to form the planets, the stuff that was left over, which then pummeled the planet surfaces and the moon surface um, before the solar system basically cleared itself out. On Venus, we don't see that. And the only explanation that people have come up with for this, there are various variations on this explanation, but the, the, the key explanation is that Venus has actually been completely resurfaced by its own lavas, that perhaps there was a period of, uh, of, of catastrophic uh, lava formation. Um, others say, no, we don't need that. It could have actually been progressive and drawn out. But it would have occurred sometime during the last billion years, according to most schools of thought. So Venus is rather unique here. It's the only rocky planet we know that's completely had a face over and then only caught the, the final end, the tail end, basically, of the, um, uh, of, uh, of the bombardment history of the, the solar system. So everything we're going to be looking at is going to be rather young. Now, I had this before. <laughs> Let's see if I can. There we go. Ah, yeah, that's just names of, of, of things. We're not going to worry about that. That's way too detailed. Um, I want to show you what some of these features on the surface of Venus look like. I don't want to get into the details. I don't want to get into the details of how they formed either. What I want you to see is they don't look like anything that you would see if you went to the web and looked at Mars or Mercury, if you looked through your telescope and looked at the moon, or if you went to your atlas and looked at places on Earth. This, for example, is an area uh, which, uh, up in the top right-hand corner of the slide, is a full uh, a Venus uh, map and there's a little yellow box there that shows you where the, the main image is from. This is Aphrodite Terra. As I said, this is about the size of Africa and it's made up of, of uh, four blocks, actually three, three major blocks. Uh, the W stands for a place called West of them. We won't worry about that. Um, but the O is, uh, yet, is, is yet another uh, 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 area and T is yet another. These are plateaus. In other words, high standing areas, but they're quite independent of each other. They don't actually look like each other. No one's quite sure what they're all doing together. So let's go in and have a look at one of them. And I want you to take a good look at the surface here. 
it's really quite amazing. If we go to, let me go find where I'm going to get my, oh, I did not want to do that. Let me go back. Good. I've got to find, there it is. If we look in this area here, you see the texture of the interior of this plateau? It's really crinkly. Um, I could best describe this as looking like alligator skin. There's nowhere in the solar system other than Venus that you see this crinkly texture. But it occurs all the way through all of the, the many um, the, of these high standing plateaus that, that make up Venus. Let me get rid of that. If you go over to this part here, then you can see that the texture is not crinkly, it's more streaky. You can sort of follow it through like this. We may have a look at that in a moment. I can't remember what's actually coming up, but you can see the similar streakiness here. This is not the same thing as mountain belts, which we get on Earth, which might, have formed, might occur at the edge of continents. These things are much shorter. Uh, they've got a very different uh, uh, perspective to them altogether. The other thing is, is that inside this plateau, get that out of the way, you can see these dark areas like that there. And there's a much smaller one here. And in fact, there's a number of them all over the place. There are others up here. And these things, they're dark. So we know nothing about the composition. That's not what they tell us. What this tells us is that they're smooth. Whereas the crinkly stuff is not smooth. And that's why it's dark. It's not reflecting much in the way of the radar signal back. And most people think that that means that these are probably large pools of lava. They're not round like they are on the moon. They probably fill the valleys or this kind of thing. Um, and, and again, uh, uh, exactly what they're doing there, unclear. Let's look at outside. The actual uh, uh, um, uh, plateau is about there. And the outside area, although it looks very busy, it's very, very different from the crinkly stuff on the inside here. So what I want to do, I want to show you more of what's outside of these plateaus. I'm going to go to the next one, I hope. I can't remember what I actually got in the slide sec sequence. Oh, very good. It's exactly what I was looking for. Uh, I need to clear these. Good. So I think it's pretty obvious that this is the, the plateau. This plateau here is called Alpha. It was called Alpha because it was actually spotted um, from Earth using the Arecibo radar, a radio telescope. And it was a large blob. They weren't sure what it was, but that was the first thing they could see. So they called it Alpha. And they called it Alpha Regio, meaning region. So we now know that it's a high standing uh, uh, plateau. And again, you've got that alligator texture in the, in the internal part. You can see uh, smooth, dark patches and blotches. Those are the, 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 the pools of lava, but it's the stuff outside, outside, this stuff out here, and out here, and out here, and out here. It's sort of medium gray. Sometimes it's very smooth as it is here. Sometimes it's more patchy. There are streaks in it as there are here. This is what's called the plains. So Venus is actually made of plateaus or high ground and plains. The plains you might think are similar to the ocean floor on Earth, they're not. And you might think that these plateaus are similar to continents on Earth, and they're not either. Uh, they're all actually probably made of the same stuff. They're probably all made of basalt material, similar to what the ocean's floor, floors are like on Earth. The fundamental difference is what happened to them after they formed. The plateaus got themselves beaten up. They got broken, they got busted. For one reason or another, they ended up with this crinkly structure. They also ended up high. Whereas the plains tend to form low ground, but they tend to be smooth and not a lot has happened in there in terms of the deformation. Although we will see that there is deformation. So let me just get rid of these. And let's move, uh, get rid of that. Uh, I think I can move on there. If we move in close, this is what the crinkly stuff can look like. I don't have a scale bar on this, I'm afraid. If we look at the, the, uh, 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 the, the, the map of uh, Venus uh, over there, oh, that was not what I wanted to do. There we go. Look at the map of Venus up in the corner here. 
and we've got a yellow dot that shows us that we're just on the south side of, uh, of uh, Aphrodite Terra. And there's this huge round uh, 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 shape here uh, called Artemis. It's about two and a half, about two, uh, 2,200 kilometers across. And it's a dome. It's not a plateau. It's not flat on top. But it's got more domes sitting on top of it. That's what these things are. And uh, that, this is really almost unique. Uh, this, sorry, this is unique in the solar system. It's surrounded by a moat. This is a, 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 a channel. It's almost 100, it's 100 kilometers across. It's a couple of kilometers deep and it goes all the way around. Exactly what this is, we don't know. But this kind of thing doesn't occur anywhere else in the solar system. I have a question if you're ready yeah. for it. No, go for it. Okay, how long is the day on Venus? Oh, the day on Venus, I think it's 200, uh, I think it's 243 days. The day on Venus is longer than its year. Interesting. It's rotating very, very slowly. And as we discussed this afternoon, it's rotating backwards. There are many, th th there are several schools of thought on why that's happening. So if we jump up towards the North Pole here, and this is the Maxwell Monty's bright spot, um, this, th this area here is about four kilometers high. It's way higher than this, the, oh, sorry, I, should, I have to draw it. I keep thinking that you can actually see my cursor and you can't. So I need, whoop, nope. I've got to get that back and, oh, there it is. Okay, good. This is Maxwell Montes, there we go. It's about four, four or so kilometers high. And it's way higher than the stuff to the, the, the right of it and way higher than the stuff to the left. This is all, all, all weird looking stuff. The stuff to the, 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 the right, which has an F over it, um, uh, uh, th th this is Fortuna, uh, the area is called, but again, you can see that crinkly texture. But if you move over to where the L is sitting, this is Lakshmi Planum. You might look at that and go, well, that looks like a lunar mare. Yeah, but lunar mares are low ground, and this is very high ground. This is actually a plateau, at least a kilometer high, and it's surrounded on all sides by, 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 by hills, which are pretty mountainous themselves. And it's even got a hill on this side too. And they're sitting on, on the edge of this plateau, which is this thing here. And the smooth lavas in there, those are, as I say, they're sitting at least a kilometer above the average uh, height of, uh, of the planet. Okay, get out of there. Oh, yes, the important thing here about uh, Maxwell Montes, uh, notice Maxwell Montes looks nothing like uh, the Cordillera in Canada or the Andes in, uh, in South America or the Alps in, in, in Europe or the Himalayas uh, in, in, in Asia. It's not a long mountain belt. It's like a blob, but it's very high. And there are all kinds of questions as to how that kind of thing could form. And again, it's unique in the solar system. There we go. Now, there aren't only plateaus, there are also uh, what are called um, uh, uh, volcanic rises. I'm going to go through this, I think, relatively quickly. Um, uh, th 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 this is a, this is a, uh, this, well, oh. on the right is a blow up of that yellow area, and you can see there's a rift. And that rift is rather like the Rift Valley in East Africa, except that it's even larger. And on the southern end, you can see uh, a, a rather sprawling, oh yeah, rather sprawling bright area here. This is a volcano. There's its crater right there. And everything is radiating out from it. These are probably fractures filled with magma. This is a, 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 a giant high standing volcano. If I clear that, clear that. That and move on. This is looking at the uh, 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 another one of these uh, volcanic highs. I'm going to move on from there. I want to show you the plains. This is what the plains look like, and you notice how they're medium to dark gray. 
which means they're relatively smooth, but they do have these bright decorations on them. And these are polygons. Now there's a scale bar on the left-hand diagram, and you can see that these polygons here, there's one right there, for example, that's 50, 60, 70 kilometers across. These ones here on the other side are about the same kind of size. They just have a different disposition. We're not really sure as to how these kinds of polygons form. You see these kinds of things in your garden when uh, we don't get much rain or when you haven't actually uh, uh, watered your garden and they're the result of desiccation. But these things are tens of kilometers across. It's unclear as to how these things would have formed. Desiccation, there's not supposed to be any water on Venus. So yet, yet, yet another mystery. Now, among the mysteries on Venus, and of course I mentioned the, 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 the question of water or no water, but there are channels, and some of these channels are extremely long. The, the one on the left, for example, is actually not in this picture. This, this picture is only 50, 50 kilometers wide, but it's part of a channel that's 7,000 kilometers long. Uh, you can see another part of it uh, over on the, 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 the right-hand side, where the section that's being shown here, the dark squiggly thing, that's about 200 kilometers long. And these channels here, no one's really sure how they form. They look rather like Earth's river channels. They even have meanders. And in fact, I can get to this. They even abandon parts of the system, Oxbow Lakes, if you remember your geography, and they even have islands in the channels. But if this was water that carved these channels, then these channels would be extremely ancient and therefore the ground should be absolutely peppered with impact craters and it's not. But if these are lavas that have carved out a channel which is 7,000 kilometers long, then how does the lava remain liquid for 7,000 kilometers of travel? As I say, it's really a series of enigmas. We don't see these things of this size anywhere else in the solar system. And we really don't have, there are many hypotheses, but there's no real consensus on how these things form. Some of the, the spectacular things are, are, are related to magma or hot rocks rising in the interior part of the mantle and then deforming the, uh, the surface, cracking it and making these radial uh, uh, fractures, which we see on the left. That picture is 250 kilometers in diameter and those radial fractures are probably filled with magma. And over on the right-hand side, you see these circular features, hundreds of kilometers across. You see the scale bar at the top of the diagram. And they're being linked between one and another by these long, thin filaments, which are probably the same kind of feature as we see on the left-hand side, fractures filled with magma. These things, we don't know what they're called, or what they are. The ones on the left are referred to as nova, or novi, that's a nova. And the ones on the right are called arachnoids, which sort of comes from the name, the, the, the notion of spiders. And the fact that, 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 that scientists are using words like this really tells us that they really are not sure uh, what, what these things are. They're using a unique vocabulary for unique structures on Venus for which we have no real parallels. Here, I just wanted to show you features you might have heard of called coroni. Again, the scale bar shows you how big these are. These things are essentially are being interpreted as magma, magma or, or hot rocks rising to the surface of the planet, cooling, sinking down again, and leaving these giant dimples. We do not see things like this on any other planet. And just to show you how incredible these things can be, this is a, 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 a corridor, let me just uh, outline this, a corridor, thousands, whoops, and that's not what I wanted to do. Let me get my draw, there we go. Um, nope, that still won't work. Okay, look, going from top left down towards the, 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 the lower right here is clearly a corridor of these circular features. The scale bar is just off the right end of the image. This is thousands of kilometers long. These are not impact features. Uh, these are features which will probably come up some kind of, 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 of fracture and, and, and formed at the surface of Venus. Whoop, there we go. I think, I believe this is my, my, my last slide. I know this has been a whistle-stop tour. 
The object of the exercise wasn't to turn you into a Venus experts. It was to give you an idea of what the surface of Venus looks like and to show you how it actually looks nothing like anything else in the solar system, which is why it's pretty confusing. But there is a lot of work being done, but scientists are being hampered by the fact that they are still working with the data from the early 1990s. There's been no new data, radar data, with regard to the surface since then. So they're basically rehashing and rehashing. There are new missions proposed, but those new missions that are being proposed will essentially focus on the atmosphere. They may or may not carry a radar capacity, but it won't be a dedicated mapping mission, which is really what's needed. We can now get much better radar images than we got uh, 30 years ago. We'll have to wait and see what happens. I think that takes me to my time. Am I right? Thank you, Simon. Venus is definitely a unique planet. Uh, 